on stage, Antoine Larmanja, that will join us right on time. Hello, Antoine, how are you? Fine, how are you doing, Mehdi? How doing are you? really well, doing really well. Glad to have you there. Uh, we received you at your previous CIO position, but now you took a, 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 you work for uh, uh, for Google Cloud, and we're really glad to have you there. Uh, you will talk with us about low code, right? So you're you one of the main evangelists on APIs for, for B2B uh, in a business right. environment. So glad to know more about what you will share with us. Yeah, you... and, the, and the, the, the next step is really from once you have your API, what can you do with it? And, and, and no code is, is, a, is a great example. Yeah, there is an API for that. Yes, but so what? How we can use them? I agree with you. <laughs> Are you able to share your content you have uh, for, uh, with us? Yes, I am. Can you see it? Yes, we can see it. That's perfect, full screen. Enjoy your time with us. All right, thanks a lot, Mehdi. So just a, a, a few words of introduction of myself. I, I work for Google Cloud. I'm, uh, I, I've, I recently work for Google Cloud and uh, prior to, uh, to my uh, uh, technical director job at Google Cloud, I was CIO of, a, of an insurance company and I've been working in the banking uh, world uh, for uh, some time as well, and as well as in the entrepreneurial world of payments um, and payments APIs more specifically. So today we are going to talk a little bit about uh, the fact that many companies have embarked on an API journey uh, successfully, and uh, they have at their disposal a huge amount uh, of APIs that sometimes are uh, uh, difficult to use, but they create lots of opportunities. And we'll try to see how to, we can unleash these opportunities. So I think I'm not going to, uh, um, to invent anything here, but it's pretty clear that now most companies are quite mature on their journey to APIs and they almost all have an API program. They almost all have an API solution. They can have also an API uh, platform. Uh, at Google, we have APG, of course, that you probably all know. Um, and then little by little, they've grown and um, they've uh, adopted new skills to create these APIs. In, in my past life, what I've experienced is that it, it, it also led to kind of a change of mindset in companies where companies used to design screens, used to design applications, and more and more, even the business people uh, start designing APIs and um, you have business analysts that are not in IT that start designing those APIs. So I would say that, and I think that surveys show it, that um, APIs uh, is, is not something that uh, is foreign to anyone now and that most uh, CIOs and CTOs have embraced the API world in various forms or shape. Uh, whether it's REST, SOAP, or gRPC. There's a prevalence on, on REST, of course, but you have uh, uh, multiple shapes of APIs everywhere, and it's, it's, it's widely rolled out. The, the thing is with this is that um, the needs are not just from an internal use, uh, so how to connect my applications and, and uh, my, uh, uh, my back office systems, to uh, my front-end services. It's also because the world is going more and more to a machine-to-machine -machine type of interaction, meaning that um, you do not just connect to your customer via a nice portal and every customer would have to use your portal. You may want to create more stickiness between you and your customer or your supplier uh, through API. So, that's that's also why the maturity of API has uh, picked up quite significantly. It creates stickiness uh, between you and, you, and your uh, partners. Um, the other thing that I have observed uh, many, many times is that um, the customers that you want to sell your products to, uh, whether you're a bank or an insurer or, uh, I don't know, uh, any any type of 
a company that needs to interact on a in a digital way with uh, with the partners and customers they are not just judged on the product itself by the ceo or the cto or the cfo that needs that wants to buy your product but they're also judged by um, the quality of the digital solution that you provide as a provider and if you provide apis that are nicely documented that are nicely supported where you have a good onboarding program where the ease of use of your apis is good where you have a support team where the where you can onboard your customers you can provision the api keys in a kind of a automa automated way then that brings a lot of value because it allows you to scale your api business if we think that api are a more of a product today if you want to scale it you need to have a great developer portal you need to have a great uh, api key provisioning uh, uh, mechanism you have to have a self-service support and you have to have a real human support behind this and that's that's where you know the, the the apis are there but we're still in between uh, on the um, on the ease of use of uh, of apis um and then so okay let's assume that all of this is there uh and then you make you want to make the best use of these apis and uh, to kind of what we call the to unleash the power of your apis how does that how can that be done and how can you accelerate your innovation or your product introduction uh, with this and that's that's one of the key things that com companies still sometimes struggle with because they have all this portfolio of apis at hand someone are not that easy to use someone are not easy to access but they still want to make sense of them and create new applications um, this API transformation has been uh, done in conjunction with new principles and new guiding principles on architecture in most companies, meaning that you've kind of removed the monoliths of your applications by creating uh, services, you can call it microservices, uh, with APIs on top. Sometimes you even have uh, a micro front end that come that comes together with these new services so each service is now smaller um, has kind of uh, edges that are clearly defined and you can then have an api for each of these services and with this portfolio this is what you what you can play with from a corporate perspective so the first thing here is um little by little all of these companies all of the corporate world will little by little decompartmentalize their it infrastructure into microservices and apis and then they will have the ability to recombine them at uh, as they want uh, why is this important it is important because um, with companies that want to introduce more frequently and in a cheaper way new products to the market they need to find a way not to reinvent the wheel each time they want to introduce new products so uh, the ability to have an api for kyc for pricing for product uh, to sign a contract through a, a signature API, the ability to combine internal APIs that are core to your market and core to your business together with APIs that uh, uh, are kind of market facing or, or external APIs, but you combine them all and you create value out of this. So, um, so you, you, if you take the first line, the first example, you start doing a KYC, then you can do a pricing and a quote that applies to a given product, and then you sign your contract, this is a product. And that, that can be introduced, that can be a new product that you can introduce to the market in a matter of weeks. Why? Because all of the business logic you already have with your APIs but sometimes you don't you want to have a different product and you want to start with the signature you want to have kyc after and pricing in the end and then 
you propose a new product at the end and you can switch from one product to another. And then you simply need to recompose and re-architect and remodel your uh, your value chain. And, and by composing this value chain differently, then the combination of, of all these APIs um, is immense because then you can uh, uh, introduce a lot of products uh, a lot faster. So um, the problem with this, so th this is this is great. So you have a portfolio of APIs. Hopefully they are well documented. Hopefully um, they are uh, well formed. You have a good uh, developer portal. Hopefully you can use APG for it um, or another uh, 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 partner portal. But the, the, the thing is, you have all this portfolio of API and you can recombine them and you can create new products. Problem with this is that you still need to, to have a front end and you still need to build the application that combines all of this business logic and these APIs uh, together. And very often, um, uh, and these applications that you want to build, they might be internally facing. Um, so that can be a productivity app for, uh, I don't know, the accounting department. That can be a productivity app for the risk underwriting department if you're in insurance or for uh, the manufacturing department in automotive, whatever. But it, it, and it can be also externally facing products that you sell on the market. But if you multiply, if you do the combination of all these APIs, you won't be able to create all the products and all the applications yourself because IT will become a bottleneck. Uh, IT will become a bottleneck because they won't have the, the, the physical ability to uh, create all these applications themselves, okay? So if you want to have a set, an, a, a, a portfolio of usable applications, you need to find a way to accelerate that. And that's where what we call citizen developers and um, no-code uh, takes, uh, takes, uh, comes into play, low code or no, co or, or no code or low code, because otherwise with the amount of applications you create, IT will just not be able to have the funding, the amount of people, the labor uh, to create all of these uh, applications. So the interesting thing that to mention here is um, the the fact that um, how is to wonder how you can empower lines of business to um, and what we call citizen developers so people that are not by default developers they are not part of IT how can you make sure um, that uh, you can uh, unleash this, the power of your APIs and create a lot of these new applications. So there are a number of things uh, to, to, to take into account here. The first thing is that these citizen developers that sit in the lines of business should not have to worry about things like the business logic or things like... Um, security or token management or authentication or things like this. This should come probably with the existing uh, platform that IT provides. So these basic, these, these, the, the, the basis of this platform needs to come with uh, your application, with your application portfolio uh, that IT provides. That means that um, all these APIs, so let's take KYC or pricing or document management, um, they come with their own business logic. They, co they come with their own uh, user management. They come with their own storage management. They come with their uh, authentication, authorization, et cetera, et cetera. And then you can build an application on, on top of this with a, a mobile uh, application or with an, a web app or stuff like or something like this. And this way, a someone who sits in um, let's say in a um, uh, in a line of business or so in accounting, in uh, product management, in sales. Can, can create their own app with limited IT resource involvement, but then 
that that creates a lot of user satisfaction because they can have their own app okay so in in google we have um a number of solutions uh, to do this we do see in the market that uh, no code um, whether it's no code or low code but no code is um, something that is um, uh, becoming very 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 big on the market why because it does not have the means and um, and uh, labor uh, to cope with all the requests of the customers um, and that's one that's something that's quite important because if you really want to create all of this you need to find a, a, a way to do this and the way we've we've uh, architected this at google cloud is to say okay i'm going to take advantage of my data sources and my apg data sources uh, con that that constitute my portfolio of apis okay and then i will i will allow my citizen developers the people that sit in the lines of business to create a uh, portfolio of apps that uh, that they can build with appsheet with a no code application this way you accelerate a lot your innovation because you don't have to reinvent the wheel vertically you only have to add another layer on top of uh, your existing apps and uh, um, for having done something similar in my previous lives i've seen this accelerate innovation accelerate a satisfaction of clients and also disentangle the needs of it from the needs of the business where it can focus on the on the business logic so with appsheet uh, and the appsheet line of product you can simply with no lines of code whatsoever connect to your apis create the customer experience the new experiences that you want to have and to make sure that um, you do not take any security risk or any privacy risk or any risk of of any sort because all of the business logic is handled behind the scenes um i'm just going to see how i'm going i'm going on on time uh i think that should be fine um the um so so that's great so you have done the first step in most companies and you have this set of apis and then you can unleash the power of its apis by giving the 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 the, the customers or your customers your internal customers the ability to create their own apps um, in my experience we uh, we were able to create a lot of apps uh, quite quickly the, the the there are a few things that need to be uh taken into account though the first one is where you we need to be careful um is to make sure that all of this is governed because if you give the possibility to hundreds of people if not thousands of people to create their own application by just connected to the api you might end up having thousands of applications uh, standing here and there in the uh, in the organization and these applications may not uh, may not uh, uh, be governed so you need to have an active uh, way of managing the list the uh, of, of of the and the usage of these applications that's very important also you want to have an active monitoring of the application from a decommissioning perspective because some of these applications may not be used anymore so you don't want to pay for an application that is not used so you know, having a decommissioning um, um, a strategy is also very important uh, another thing is um, that having the citizen developers across the organization is great but they need to be uh, community managed and having a community an active community management of your citizen developers is super important because that will create more ideas 
that will uh, create more feedback to IT on the business logic or the or the APIs themselves or the type of data that they would like to tap into. That will create ideas on the fact that, and I didn't talk too much about it, that you can you can enhance the value of all this with artificial intelligence and machine learning and additional services and creating that community of users, which is not necessarily based on a kind of a, a supplier customer relationship, like with traditional IT business relationship is creating also a lot of value. Uh, but you also need to make sure, and that would be uh, uh, my last uh, important point here, is that you want to enforce those rules the fact that you don't want citizen developers to take any risk on privacy on gdpr you don't want them to store data where you don't want data to be stored so there's still a very important and active role on uh, from an architecture perspective and from an it perspective by the local uh, by by the, by the core uh, it team and if you are able to govern all this the apis the business logic and all the applications that can be created by a no-code solution like AppSheet, then you, you multiply the possibilities of innovation and the possibilities of creating new applications by an order of magnitude. So that's, that's basically uh, the, the, the message that I, I wanted to convey here. Um, that will allow you to drive a lot more efficiencies um the the field workers uh will be able to have mobile applications without having to uh, to uh, uh, hire armies of developers to have mobile applications the the line of the lines of business will feel they are empowered the um the uh combination the the, the people from the business will have the feeling and will feel that they are becoming more digital and they are actually actively taking part of the in the digitalization of their company. And this governance or this community management will create, will remove barriers and will create more and more intimacy between business and IT people. And it will engage your workforce. It will engage the, the interaction between lines of business and, and uh, IT. And um, of course, you will still have to make, and it's not the, the one and only solution to everything, you will still have to have uh, uh, own and proprietary solutions. But for a lot of applications, where you struggle to get the funding or you struggle to get started, then this solution is, is really something that uh, will, uh, will uh, accelerate um, the way uh, you can innovate. So that was the main messages that um, I had, and I'm happy to uh, take um, a few questions. Have, yeah, we have time for, for some questions uh, uh, there. Uh, we have a yeah, three minutes. Uh, one question about, um, uh, you know, product people or business people. Uh, we think most of the time developers are, you know, the next big kings, if I make the next big kings or the big enablers. But it's is it maybe because we didn't see enough tooling for uh, non-technical people or business managers to leverage APIs, right? right. So, so uh, yeah, do you agree with that point? No, I do. I do. I do agree. So you have... So I, I do believe that developers still have a bright future because all this business logic will be supported by more and more complex and sophisticated technology. So uh, everything that sits in the core IT will still have a very bright future. Um, plus the fact that it's hard to find great developers. So the, they, they I mean, maybe with COVID, that it's uh, it, the, the market is is a bit tougher for developers today. But but still, having front end developers to create thousands of applications is not easy to find, and it's a lot of cost. So if you can empower your business people to do it on their behalf, that's great. That was not possible like five years ago because we didn't have the tools, we didn't have the solutions, we didn't have the the platforms to do it. Now, with more and more of these low-code and no-code solutions, you can 
you can um, uh, you can do it. Apple, uh, Apple, Google Cloud took a very opinionated approach uh, to it, uh, saying that no code being really um, unleashing the power of APIs and uh, empowering the, the lines of business with really a no-code application is a bit opinionated, but it's the way to go. Well, last question here. Uh, we, we talk about shadow IT and, you know, some business managers want to bypass, let's say, IT protocols to still deliver application yeah. with uh, IT consulting, for example. Is low-code and no-code a way for IT to, re like, re-engage business owners into a safe, and they control IT environment. Absolutely. Because if you provide the underlying business logic API security, there's no way around it. You won't be able to have, if you just do no code or low code just without IT completely, then you risk, you run the risk of not having access to enough data and business functionalities that sit in the back end, in the back end systems. So you take, you don't have to take care of it because um, all of the business logic, the security, the GDPR, the privacy, the encryption, all of these things that a line of business does not want to hear about can be done by IT. And then the fun part, uh, so to speak, can be done by the lines of business. So th that's that's definitely a way to re-engage uh, the dialogue between, you know, you can have like departments that have not talked to their IT departments for years because they know that they would never have the funding. Today, they don't really need the funding. They can just create their own no-code uh, application. Yeah, it's self-service all the way down. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, uh, we, we, need to, we need to wrap up, but uh, in the chat, you can answer to Julien who, who asked about governance, if it's business-wide, right? If we allow low-code on, uh, on the whole company level, right? Uh, you can answer in the chat or in private, yeah. uh, private message. Combination. 